Well, I think there's a couple of things. It's, a, it's understanding your patient. Um, so understanding what your patient wants in terms of rehabilitation. It's very easy to think that we've got fantastic technologies now that we can almost rehabilitate patients back to what they were before. But not every patient wants that. And, and also not every patient needs that in their next stage of their life. So I think it's, it's an issue of being able to, and I always joke that men aren't very good at it, actually listening to your patient and actually working out what that patient would like in the next part of the journey following their, their treatment and providing that in the best way that the patient can uh, gain both physically and mentally from that. Okay, so dental implants obviously are a great asset to dentists in the current climate, but in patients who have had oral cancer, they may have had free flaps put in with bits of bone from other areas of the body, and that bit of bone will be different to the, the maxillary or mandibular bones, so the integration might be slightly different. The quality of bone will be different. Often the soft tissue that the implant is coming through may be skin as opposed to mucosa, which creates a, a problem of its own. So I think implants into the flaps can be a problem, but obviously implants into irradiated oral tissues can be a massive problem as well. And so in fact, a lot of units won't place implants into irradiated tissue. There's a big debate in the literature about the best way of managing that. There's a lot of work by people at Marks who look at whether certain doses of radiotherapy would mean that implants are still possible at a low risk. I think again it's like what I said earlier that it's related to the patient's uh, requirements. If the patient realises there are small risks but want to get back to normality then that's often a risk that they'll take.